so the backstory for this box, all right, I guess it's more of a crate really, is pretty interesting. So Intel brought me uh, Cevitus and Anmunition, who you may or may not be familiar with, but yeah, we'll link those guys down below, down to do a video about their 8086 processor. And we thought it was just kind of like we were on a panel about uh, PC gaming and game streaming. And then they brought us down again and actually surprised us with computers that were based on sort of what we imagined as our dream PCs. And I was particularly surprised because it is a formidable challenge coming up with the PC system for the guy who literally already has every PC system. This is the wall of video cards. So what did they come up with? I guess we're about to find out, aren't we? after I tell you about our sponsor for this video, Synergy. Synergy allows you to share a mouse and keyboard across multiple computers, and it's even compatible with Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Raspberry Pi. Check it out at the link in the video description. Okay, so first things first, let's get this moved somewhere a little more picturesque. Okay, that seems better. So, there were a couple of sort of guiding things that I had said in the video. Obviously, I love quiet systems because in my mind, there's just no reason to have a loud system anymore now that cooling technology has advanced to the point that it has. Another thing that I mentioned was my love of retro machines. And not retro in the sense that they have really old hardware inside. Retro in the sense that they're kind of like, uh, like classic machines that have been updated. So one of my favorite things that we've done in the last couple of years has actually been the Sleeper series that Alex has worked on. Those, these are just kind of like random boxes that we've found at the local Free Geek and then converted into, you know, banging gaming rigs. I was gonna do all these by hand, just to like add to the suspense of the video, but then I saw how many there were. I don't think they can handle that much suspense. You know, the thing about the internet is somewhere, someone is into it. No matter what it is, somewhere, someone is like, oh yeah, taking out screws and putting them in. Could watch that all day. So what's really interesting is that instead of going to uh, the usual suspects, you know, BS Mods or Lee Harrington or whoever else in the PC modding scene, Intel actually solicited the help of a company that's more into like Hollywood props building and less into computers. And so they were basically just given the footage of us describing our dream machines and told to make them come to life. Oh, oh. uh-oh. So when we set up this space, I actually forgot that there's a monitor that goes with the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this out of the way as much as it pains me to do so because this is an amazing monitor right here. Which isn't to say that in spite of what it looks like, this one is the worst gaming monitor ever. And you'll see what I mean in a minute here. I get such a kick out of this thing. I've seen it before and I'm still, like I'm laughing inside just in anticipation. <laughs> so that's it. It's not the most practical approach to uh, skinning up a monitor that I could have possibly imagined because as you guys might already suspect, Yes, the front cover here does in fact cover up the corners of the monitor, so it's, it's actually kind of hard to use. And these dials, these dials don't do anything. But this is definitely the most complete attempt at retroizing a modern display that I think I've ever seen. So they're using like a, a high density kind of prop foam here that they've shaped and painted and then they've painted the back of the display in what I think is a really great, really close approximation 
to the kind of ugly, greeny, browny, tan color that you'd often find on older systems. I don't know if that plastic was just cheaper or if they actually thought that looked space age or whatever, but so I'm sure you guys are eagerly anticipating the system now that you've seen this. This thing is unbelievably cool. I mean, here, the, actually, under this very table we're opening it on is a perfect example of why it's impossible to send Linus a dream system. I already have a murder box. Like. Now, I should preface this by saying that while some people are going to love this, there are going to be others who are actually kind of upset at what happened here. Because the case that was chosen for this particular retro sleeper, well, let's just say there aren't a lot of good condition IBM 5150s left out in the wild. And now there's one fewer because this is what they sent over. An absolutely tricked out, and you can't really call it a sleeper anymore because of this gorgeous acrylic window on the top, but it's a tricked out IBM 5150 chassis, and the level of attention to detail in this thing is unfreaking real. I'm gonna walk you guys through it here. Before we fire it up, for the first time, we first have to appreciate one of the finest details here. So you can see, obviously, this, this old chassis was not designed for modern standard ATX components. So they had to create their own acrylic backplate with, check this out, those are WAN logos cut into the, uh, the grill for the radiator. And then also our motherboard and our GPU, which is mounted using a PCI Express riser. The most impressive part to me though, is this. They actually integrated the original power switch. So instead of having a chintzy little power flippity doo da on the back, it's your power switch for the power supply. And they redid all the internal wiring. Have a look here. So that it actually functions as the switch for the back of the power supply. Proceed. Proceed. So sick. So sick. So check this out. Not only does the original power button work and have an LED behind it to indicate that the system's on. So even though these floppy disk bays aren't functional, check this out. Drive activity is still handled by the original LEDs. And then these slits down the middle are actually functioning as an intake for cooling the graphics card. Can you put like no, it's fine. real flop? Oh, no, you can't. That's cool, though. You're ruining everything, Brandon. What? 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 You're supposed to talk about it on camera. Oh. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, man. Oh, the camera is something great, but. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, wow. Okay. So Look at this. Cool. Anyway, the cooling system is actually pretty ingenious. So, to keep dust from getting in, they've got an intake here and an intake here. And then the whole thing just kind of blows out the top. So they've got like, I don't know, whatever that is, about three quarters of an inch. The CPU, now this was interesting because everyone else got 7980XEs. And so I was kind of like, yo, I got an 8086K. Like, what's the deal with that? And they were like, well, we thought the 8086K made perfect sense given that this is an original IBM 5150 chassis, okay. which had the original 8086 in it. We also like messed up yeah. You know what we should do? We should get Alex to look at this and see if he thinks he can beat it. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we mad pie. So I told Intel that one of the coolest projects I think we've done over the last little while, or some of the coolest projects have been the sleeper machines. And this was kind of their take on fusing retro with new. No, those don't do anything. That's pretty sexy. We should engrave a great big dick butt right here. Okay. No. <laughs> we you, can engrave the Intel logo. You can go. 
So I've already found one unexpected side effect of. Turn down the brightness oh. on the monitor. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, how's that? Oh, that's great, bud. Okay, <laughs> let's just put that back on there. Uh, so this is cool. Because the 8086K is the highest performance single thread processor on the market, check this out. Our local Steam cache is actually working better than ever before. So when we tested it, we were having a hard time getting such impressive numbers on titles that have a lot of compression because we actually run into CPU bottlenecks. But on this one, 81 megabytes per second downloading Grand Theft Auto V from our local cache. That's really good for that title. What? Yeah, Grand Theft Auto V, over 80. That single thread performance. God damn. No matter how cool your system is, you can't get anything done when Windows decides, hey, how about now? And I actually have an IBM Model M from 1986 that I can hook up to it here. That looks so good. Like, so good! Oh, well, this blows. I actually don't have my PS2 adapter here. So disappointing. I am not very familiar with ASRock's BIOS style. Let's just go for 5 gigahertz full auto and see if it manages that. Boom. Speed, 5 gigahertz. I'll be curious to see if that download goes even faster now. Yep, we just hit 85 peak. Pretty sure that's the best we've seen so far. All right, so let's see how she performs. FPS max, zero. And we are sitting somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 to 300 frames per second at any given moment here. I mean, it still doesn't help me aim at anything, but you know, it is what it is. Man, that's butter smooth. So it's a TN panel, so frankly, not the most color accurate experience ever. But this thing's running at 144 hertz. Of course, we expected that with like an 8086K and uh, GTX 1080 Ti, but man, bots suck. Ah, no! <laughs> How much do they suck? Oh, they still suck. They still suck. I just. I own that I'm also not very good. So that's pretty much it. What we've got so far is the coolest retro themed gaming system that I have ever seen. But I really don't think this is the last you're gonna see of this and I'd love to hear from you guys. What would you like to see us do to this thing to take it to the next level? Please leave your comments below because we've already got some ideas on our own, but uh, we're definitely interested in what you guys think. And we're also interested in telling you guys about Thermaltake. Thermaltake is celebrating 20 years of Thermaltake with their level 20 cases. They've got four styles to choose from, the VT, the XT, the GT, and an updated version of their triple chambered full tower case. They all feature sleek modern design with rounded front corners and tempered glass, and they've got ample room for cable management and radiators if you're into water cooling. They also feature USB Type-C connections for the I.O., and you can check out the link in the video description to get yours on Amazon.com. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, then you must not like fun, but you can hit that button. That is your right. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured. Haha, <laughs> good luck. At the link in the video description. You could get an 8086K or a GTX 1080 Ti or a 2080. So as far as most people can tell, it's pretty similar. Until RTX comes. Um, also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should definitely join. One thing's for sure. This mouse has to go a little more off-white. <laughs>